nothing more valuable than your peace. There's nothing more important than your peace. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about just the absence of confusion. I'm talking about peace being wholeness and thoroughness and completeness to know that God has already worked things out for us as well. So this, so this, so this okay, and, and, the, and the D we have right here for troubled is distress. Distressed. And distress means to cause strain, stress, distress, or suffering. Can you read it if you yeah, read this with me if you will about distress? Nothing, Nothing else will comfort you like, like the voice of God when troubles weigh heavy on you and, and friends pacifying words fail. You, you can, can trust God. God. He, he can, can say the only words that you need to, to hear in your, your time of distress. distress. And it says that in Psalms in the very bottom, 112, 112, 11. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. So this idea of distress, this idea of stress coming up, all these, so the, again, all this is related to trouble as well. And this is our verse that goes along with this. So now, now with all what we know about trouble, let's read this verse now with a new mindset to say we are not going to let trouble trouble us. Let's read this together. Peace, peace I leave with, with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not, not as, as the world is, do I, I give to you. Do not, not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. And then from Psalm 32, 8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Somebody I'll just give God a hand, got a praise, or just that promise right there. He is made by now in Jesus' name. So what I'm going to do now is we get ready to conclude our time of sharing here, is to go back in and take a look at just a few things here. Uh, and let's read these last two together before we look over the, over the trouble-free here. God has a purpose for your pain, a reason for your struggle, and a reward for your faithfulness. Trust him and don't give up. Come on now. Now, peace is what? It is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Christ. As long as Christ is on board, trouble does not have to trouble us. So as we get ready to take a look at this, I want to go back in and just hit you all to have for your notes now. If you look inside, we said trouble free. We have a couple of points that I want to hit one point. Well, we made up to this point and then end with our last two E's there. So we'll have a full set to go back in and reference as well. So we, we look at the T-R-O under trouble free that you already have as well. So the, you, you already have this Psalm 41 from C V. Tell the distress present and the Lord set me free. So the distress was there, the suffering was there, the stress was there. And, and the psalmist declared that the Lord already set me free. Then, and I love, and I'll give you one other tip for this one just to go with it. Let's go back to Psalm 4 4 NLT. Think about sin mm -hmm. and anger overnight and remain silent. So, what is it saying right here? So at this point, what, what the, the implication was not to act out on sin, not to act out on anger, but to think about it overnight and remain silent because right now the Lord will fight for you. All we have to do is be quiet and we won't see these challenges again. The R was what? Righteousness. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So we know that righteousness is right standing with God. Uh, let's read this together. You know this very well from Psalm 519. For his by the old man's, man's disobedience. Who is that one man who disobeyed? Adam. Adam. The, the many man were made sinners. sinners. So we, how do we become sinners? By being born. Because of Adam's disobedience, we were made sinners. Keep going, please. So, so by the man, one man's obedience, the men will be righteous. made righteous. How do we become? We were made sinners. How? Being born. Being born. We were made righteous. How? Being born, again. Being born again. So our behavior does not determine our righteousness. Our belief does. We talked about before. The O right here. Oh God, oh God who declares me innocent, free me from my troubles. So that's our that's, that's our T R O that we have here. The U B L you should have on your notes as well, just to kind of highlight those. I, go ahead. Understand God's teachings. Understand God's teachings. We stand under the teachings of God. Please read that together. 
spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You ever talk to somebody who was not saved about spiritual things, they look at you like you're crazy? <laughs> Well, sometimes you talk to Christian folk, they look at the great. And the idea was, but spiritual things have to be spiritually discerned. In other words, I, it's, again, we talk about the Spanish. If, if somebody right now, we got a, 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 a lot, of, several people that come to Zoom class who speak Spanish. And one time they were in there and they were just going at it. And I don't know if they were talking about past did or anyone. But, I mean, I mean, but we didn't have the understanding of their language. So they were talking, they communicated, we couldn't understand, we were on the outside. The Holy Spirit is talking to believers and talking to us. Folks who are not saved on the outside, they don't understand what's going on. They don't understand what God's working out in our lives right now. And too many times we're trying to, we cannot go to unspiritual people for spiritual understanding. It is the Holy Spirit, we got a whole month on the Holy Spirit coming up, we need a whole century to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Oh, let's read this one. First Corinthians 2, 14 from NIV. The person without now, the spirit does, does not accept the things that come, come from the spirit of God, but, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because, because they, they are discerned only through the, through the spirit. spirit. So this is what happens. Our understanding of spiritual things comes to a renewed and a transformed mind. We cannot understand. That's, that, that's why we now, I'm with, we now are at a different level of understanding trouble and righteousness and being accepted because our mind has been renewed and transformed. The best thing somebody who is not saved can do is to get saved, and the best thing somebody saved can do is to have our minds renewed. Understanding spiritual things. The next we have the B. But let them get caught by their own plans. So here's what happens. The Lord has promised us, at this point, vengeance is his. We don't have to help God get folk back. <laughs> if God wants to get you, you're going to get got. So we don't need any help. Our role is to say, this, this thing upset me for some reason. Let me now understand why that reason is, so if it comes up again, I don't go down again. But then, praise God, his grace and mercy raise us up. But our role is not to go back in and then, and then we say, I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm going to pray that sin to be for And some of you got to be praying. It's about saying, we are expecting and looking for the good in the life of others. I told you that Sam Proctor, Proctor Hall over there at a t is named after Sam Proctor. Dr. Proctor, before he went to be with the Lord, had, had this book, The Substance of Things Hoped For. And in there he talks about love is creating good in the life of another. That's what love is. We create good in somebody else's life. We find ways to bless. We create good. So, the, so we don't spend time trying to get, folk don't get caught up in their, in their own plans anyway. And, and, and this, this is, in Proverbs 26 reminds us about this. Please read that now. Whoever, Whoever digs a pit for others will fall, fall into it. it. Whoever, Whoever tries, tries to roll the boulder down, down on others will be crushed. crushed by it. Now, when, they, when the boulder rolls up on it, let me laugh now. You just go back at that point and say, God, God, I just thank you. I'm going to keep focused on you. I'm a, I'm a, now, God, use me to help them raise their grace again as well. And then, so then the L, the next L we had, the L was what? Listen, listen to, to the longings of those. That's what God does. God listens to the longings, the hurts, and the challenges of those who suffer. Then last week we did, and so last week we did the EFR. The E, the first one was what? Enemies delivered. We're delivered from enemies. God has promised. I don't care what our trouble is, what our enemies are. God has already delivered us from this. Can we just give God just a hand clap of praise and deliver from enemies right now in the name of Jesus? Now what happened? He didn't say delivered us from some enemies. We've been delivered from them all. Now this F. Face within me. Spirit and is overwhelmed, wrapped in gloom. So what happens? He was saying his spirit, things were going on so challenging. His spirit fainted within him. He was overwhelmed. And what happens is so how do we look at our else? How do we make it through times of trouble? This is the, we got we got two, two, uh, several things here to make it through times of trouble. The first F is what? For on you do I lean, and in you do I trust. That's how we make it through trouble. We lean on God. We trust God. We depend on God. I don't depend on people. I don't depend on, on circumstances. I depend and trust totally on God. My hope is built 
on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is thick and sand. In the midst of trouble, we learn to lean and trust on God, and trust God. I, I'm telling you, and, and, I, I, and, and I didn't know, again, that the family didn't know this, but I, every time I think about leaning and depending on God, I, I think about the time, even before the whole diagnosis of cancer and recognizing now, God deserves a hand clap of praise. And Sister Neil is cancer-free again. Give God another hand clap of praise for that. You know, I told you before that she was in a store and, 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 and had fallen out and everything, and the cashier was looking down there, First words out of her mouth, by his stripes I'm healed. They thought she had a concussion. Now what she was doing, there was enough word in her that when it was needed, it came out of her. You can't get something out that you didn't put in. You, uh, you just can't go around here with like, I'm going to put the Bible in my, in my pillow at night and, and come through my head. If the word is not in there, it can't come out. But because she had enough word in her, she already declared by his stripes she was already healed. Why? Because she was leaning and dependent and trusting God. How do we make it through? We make it through by knowing I can lean and depend and trust in God and God has never, ever, 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 ever let us down. It may not come as we want it, when we want it, how we want it, but God has never, ever, 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 ever let us down. He is not a man that he should lie. He would not let us down as we lean and depend and trust in him. So and, 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 uh, well, please read this at the very bottom. Trusting God is what faith is, isn't is about, about asking God to stop the storm. storm. Faith, faith is, is about trusting God, God to help you through the storm. Come on now. Storm may come out there, but praise God. May you may lose a few singles. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the structure is still standing. All right, so how do we make new times of trouble? Is next F. For you, you are my God. God. Teach, Teach me to do your will. Yes. So this is the point. Trouble has come to teach us something. So you, I remember you, my God. Help me learn, God, what you want me to learn out of this situation as well. And then the argue about the righteousness here as well. And then so for today, let me give us our two E's and we'll finish this. This is from, from Zechariah 10, 1 through 18, CEV, or Message Translation, actually, and CEV. So I want to go back in here and take a look at, here are our E's, this is the, you already have this. So it tells us right now in CV that the enemies, the, the, the enemies had a cavalry. You think about a cavalry. What do you think about when you think about a cavalry? Think about one? Whole bunch of them. You know, back in the Western, when the cavalry came, it, 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 all you saw little hats running up and down, little dust going up. So the cavalry, all the enemies, God says, were crushed because I, the Lord, would be on their side. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the Lord is on our side, he has made a promise of commitment that all the enemies, all the Calvary's enemies have been crushed as well. Enemy, the, Calvary, the enemies have a Calvary. They were all crushed because God said they'll be on his side. Then here's our next E right here, Ephraim. You will recall that Joseph had two sons. One named Manasseh and one named Ephraim. You remember that Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. He had a dream in, in, Psalm 30, in, in Genesis 37 that everybody was going to bow down to him. And then his father made him a coat of many colors. And as a result, the brothers got mad and were going to kill him. But they got, he got sold into slavery. When he was sold into slavery... It says in Genesis, in, in, in Genesis 41, 1, he was in jail for two years. And then somebody remembered he could interpret dreams. Pharaoh had a dream that he was troubled about, and he sent for David, and his pastor, I said, for, for, uh, for Joseph, and he sent for Joseph. As Pastor was telling me earlier, God used that two year period to prepare him to go from the prisoner, from prison to the palace. Don't, 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 don't you give up in your palace, in your prison. Because the palace is on the way. Don't you give up in trouble. Because triumph is on the way. So here Joseph was, hadn't done anything wrong, but was still trusting God, still relying on God, still believing God. And in one minute, got transformed to now be the second man in control over all of Egypt. Had two children, one named Manasseh, 
one name evil. 